Hello and uh, welcome to Upstack America's Oracle EBS Financial Functional Training. My name is Bob and I'm the lead senior consultant for Upstack America. And uh, with me today I have Victor, who is also a senior consultant. And today we are handling lesson seven of the receivables module. And uh, Victor, please walk us through. Uh, thank you, Bob, for the introduction. Uh, welcome everybody to this lesson uh, in our Financial Functional Training Series. Uh, in this session, uh, we are going to talk about creating uh, transaction sources, transaction types, and standard memo lines with a view to finally use uh, two of those features, transaction types and the memo lines, uh, to define uh, the rules for auto accounting. So in our previous session, we talked about each of these features in some details. I, and um, we saw what each one of them affects. Uh, we saw the similarity between transaction types and the memo lines is that we can use them as the basis for our auto accounting rules. Okay. So we are going um, to create these features and finally we are going to define auto accounting. Uh, we are going to start by looking at the setup that we want to have okay, at the end. This is what we aim to have and I hope that this table will uh, simplify the, the idea. So what problem are we trying to solve? Let's start there. When we go to enter our transactions and we go to the lines, okay? When auto accounting is not set up, we have to go and manually enter the distributions, the GL accounts for our lines. Okay, uh, let's take a small break. Okay, so when we are entering transactions, um, as we saw the first time, we had to enter the distributions manually, okay? But with our auto accounting, we want to overcome that challenge such that we can have those GL accounts uh, populated for us so that we don't have to go to the distributions for the lines to enter them manually. And the way we want to do this is for receivables, for example, we can set up at the transaction type when we create the transaction type, okay? we can enter this account combination as the account for this transaction type, okay? And then when we go and enter our, define our account, auto accounting rules, we are going to say that for receivables, we want the account to be derived from the transaction type and that account is going to be defined there and it's going to be this. So in the same way, we are going to define an account for these two revenue streams, okay? So we're going to have two revenue accounts that we create in our value sets, okay? This 40, 20 and 40, 30. I have already created these accounts actually in my natural account value set. And I have named them consulting services and consulting and site clearing services, okay? So when we are entering a, tr a transaction, we have a receivables account that is debited and we also have revenue accounts that are credited. So we can have one receivables line and multiple uh, 
revenue lines, okay? So if this is a transaction we are entering, for example, we want such that uh, instead of going to enter this combination manually, when we select the standard memo line, which is going to be, uh, the name is going to be the same as this consulting services, then this account is automatically populated. Why? Because we had defined it as so when we were creating the standard memo line. Okay, and the same goes for the, for the second uh, line. However, so uh, before we achieve this, which is the final result, we have to create transaction type and create these two standard memo lines. And like I have said, I've already created these natural accounts in my value set. So uh, if you want to follow exactly as my setup, uh, you can create your own accounts too. In addition to those features that we have discussed, uh, the transaction types and um, the standard memo lines, we also have the transaction sources. So this is the navigation we are going to follow when we create transaction sources. Remember what we said that transaction sources determine the automatic batch numbering, the automatic transaction numbering. You can select to have these two options or you can decide to do it manually. And we can also define a default transaction type uh, for a transaction source, okay? So we're going to create our transaction source. After that, we will go and create our transaction type and then we'll come back to the source and we can enter that transaction type there as the default transaction type. So let's start here and we're going to go and create our transaction source. So that's the navigation. Set up transactions. And we want sources. Okay, need to log in. Okay. <clears throat> So look at the options that we have here. Uh, when we define a transaction source, um, we define it for an operating unit, okay? That is the only operating unit that is um, available to us, okay? Uh, since it's the one we assigned at the profile option for responsibility. We can also select a legal entity. So we are going to keep our setup pretty straightforward. Uh, this operating unit is going to serve Mascani developers legal entity. As you can see, the other legal entity is also available and we can have setup such as that, but we're going to start with a straightforward and simple one. So Mascani developers legal entity. Now we can give uh, this source a name. Uh, let's say we call it Makani Developers um, Let's just call it Mas Mascani Developers. Okay manual the type is manual which i have also added to the name uh, of our transaction source you can see the only two types that we talked about imported or manual we can keep the description of the name 
Now, what did we say? Um, transaction sources control, uh, automatic batch numbering, automatic transaction numbering, and you can also specify a default transaction type. So you will find those options available to you here. Okay, this transaction source is active and you can have an effective date range by putting an end date. We don't want to have one. Automatic batch numbering. So do we want receivables to automatically number our transaction batches? Let's say yes, so we don't have to do it ourselves. What is this last number? It is asking you for the last number and then it will pick the number after that as the first as the next number when you enter your next um, batch under this source. Okay. So for example, um, if we enter 99 here, then the next batch number will be 100. We can uh, do the same for uh, the transactions. So let's use uh, 999 instead, and let's do the same for the transactions. So you have other options here, uh, which we are not going uh, to use. Okay, at the moment you can see options such as allowing duplicate transaction numbers, All right? Here is where you can select uh, default transaction type, All right? Uh, and you can see some of the types available. We want to create our own type, so we are going to leave this empty for now. And then when we create our type, we are going to come back and enter it here. This is the navigation for creating transaction types. This is what transaction types determine. Uh, you can use them uh, for auto accounting uh, as we are going to use ours, all right? So when we create our transaction type, we are going to see there's a place we can specify um, uh, the accounts. The other thing that transaction type affects is whether uh, the transactions you, end up, you enter under this type affect the customer balance. An option we are going to see is referred to as open receivable. And the other option you can control there is whether transactions under that type are posted to GL. So let's follow this navigation. So we go to setup transactions, transaction types. Again, you can see the fields that are available uh, to you. Operating unit, this will be the only one available to you. Legal entity, uh, we have the uh, option of both legal entities on our ledger that I mean that account our, our for themselves in the Mascani ledger. But we want to go to with a straightforward setup. So Mascani developers operating unit with Mascani developers legal entity. So we want to give this transaction type a name. And let's say this will be uh, Mascani project invoices. OK. 
Okay, so that doesn't fit. Uh, invoice. Okay, I think that will do. And you can add the description here. Mascani. Invoices. We have to associate this with a class. Remember, we said these are seeded. So these are some of the options you have. We want to put this under class of invoice. Okay. Uh, we are going to go with a creation sign, a positive sign, um, which means we're entering positive amounts. And uh, we are going to go with a print option so that we are able to print uh, transactions entered under this type. These are the transactions uh, statuses that we talked about, uh, which uh, you can use, the end user can use for their own, maybe like approval hierarchy or approval uh, workflow or something like that, uh, depending on what they have done on the transactions. Um, they can assign a certain uh, status. So you can enter this here uh, and it will default down to the transaction, okay? Now, this option, open receivable, is what uh, determines whether transactions under this type will open or will affect the customer balance. So we want them to do that, we're going to leave that checked. And you can also see this option for uh, post to GL. So we're going to leave that checked also. So down here under accounts is where uh, you see we can enter uh, the accounts, okay? So for this uh, transaction type, we want to define the receivable account only. And we are going to enter this in our uh, accounting flex field. So Mascani developers account will have a receivables account right there, 1200. You can default everything else. So we are going to enter just that for now. This they're not uh, mandatory fields, right? But we want to enter this receivables account because when we create our auto accounting rules, we want uh, to the rule we create for our receivables account to refer to transaction uh, types. So we are going to be entering transactions under uh, under this type. And uh, when we do, this is the account that's going to be uh, defaulted down there to the distributions for those transactions, for the lines, I mean. Um, however, you can always go to those distributions and override whatever has been entered there. So that doesn't mean that when this account combination is uh, populated into uh, the distribution, then it's final. You can go and, and change it. So let's save our work here. We have our type. And before we go back to our slides, let's go to sources. 
and let's look for our source Close this. Mascani. So I'm going to assign the source that we created here, the type, sorry. I believe it has Mascani somewhere. Mascani project invoices. And I can save now. So now let's go to standard menu lines. I don't know why I put menu lines here, but this should be memo lines. Apologies for that error. We say uh, memo lines, we can assign them to a transaction when uh, that item we are describing or we are selling is not an inventory item, okay? So something like consulting services or site clearing services as we have seen that we are going to use in our example. So you can create standard memo lines and when you do, you can also specify uh, accounts there. And we are going to use that functionality um, to define our auto accounting uh, rules uh, by telling them to go and derive the revenue accounts from uh, the standard memo lines. So let's follow this navigation. And again, this is memo lines. So set up transactions memo lines. So what is the name we want to give this? Uh, we can give this consulting services. You can have that as a description too. Consulting services um, revenue. We are going to have this as a type line, okay? And there are other fields uh, which you can enter uh, values, uh, classifications for tax. What we want is to enter the revenue account, all right? So, Like I said, they created revenue accounts for consulting services. Here, for example, consulting services. So when I'm entering a transaction and under that uh, description field for the lines, I select uh, this consulting services uh, memo line. This revenue account will be uh, defaulted to the distributions. I can go and change it, but if I don't, this is what will uh, be used. Let's create the second one. And we can call this site clearing services.
I also created an account for this. and I can save my work. Now, we have got to the point uh, where we can now do our auto accounting. So if we follow this navigation, we'll go to the window where uh, we can set up uh, the rules which auto accounting is going to use. Uh, actually, this should also say set up transactions and auto accounting. <clears throat> so, uh, set up transactions and auto accounting. So, we're setting this up for um, our operating unit for scanning developers. Type. Let's see what we have here. Um, these are the types. Okay. Now, auto accounting. What does it do? It uh, it generates or it uh, enters for you the distributions, the default for the GL accounts for your lines. So when you're creating auto accounting, you create by uh, those lines you want uh, uh, auto accounting to uh, populate the uh, GL accounts for. So for us, um, we are going to start with receivable. So our segments are displayed. What do we have um, under table name under this list of values? So we have sales reps, site, and transaction types. Okay. So we want our receivable account to come from the transaction type. Remember, that's where we entered the receivable account and we can do the same for all of the other segments we entered the whole combination there so uh, we can have that okay Here under constant, uh, we are going to see how it, it can be used. You can select a specific value, okay? So you specify uh, a combination instead of telling Oracle where to go and read and get the, uh, the segment value but we want to use transaction type in our case. Let's save this. This is a message that you're going to get uh, when you make uh, these changes, all right? So we click OK. Now let's create another auto accounting rule. Okay, cancel. Uh, 
uh, it's because uh, my selector was in this child segment instead of in the header. So now we want to create one for revenue. And we want this to come from the standard memo lines. Okay. So we want to Since we have this option of selecting uh, the source for each segment, it means you can derive the values for different segments from different sources. Okay. So we have uh, auto accounting for both uh, receivables and revenue, and we can uh, save our work will get this message. So what does this mean? This means now if we go and enter transactions under that transaction source which we have created, uh, which will default to the transaction type that we also created and assigned to it, we will have we will not have to go to the distributions to enter the GL account. And let's test that out. So let's go to transactions. Uh, let's enter a transaction direct instead of going through batches. Source. Uh, this is what I want to use, the source we created. Uh, you can see the type is defaulted down here. The legal entity, which we also defined at the source and at the type. Okay. Uh, the client or the customer is Uh, real much stores. So we can go to the line items. Payment terms has been defaulted to this. Now, under description, now you can see we have the option to select. Uh, from this description field, standard memo lines, okay? So let's say one of the products was, or one of the things we sold was consulting services. Okay. We could have entered the unit price and the units of measure okay and uh, the standard memo lines but we did not so let's say we are measuring in hours and um so it has maybe five hours at uh, two hundred dollars per hour so one thousand okay Let's have a second line, and this time we want uh, site clearing. Oh, okay. So another thing that I should mention, this field still remains uh, in that you can type your own uh, description or you can pick the value from the list. So that's why when I type there and press tab instead of popping up the list, it just went to the next field. 
Uh, however, that's not what I want to do. I want to use the standard memo line that I created for site clearing. And there it is. If, for example, I come and type in consulting services revenue instead, instead of picking it from the list, I type it out, um, then the standard memo lines may not work. So if you want the standard memo lines to work, uh, use the pick list. So let's just enter the same amount. Now, before we had to go and enter the distributions. So let's go to the distributions and see what we have there. If we have our accounts, we should have our accounts populated for us. And as you can see, there is the account. And if you want to see whether the receivables account is there too, we can select accounts for all lines. And there's the receivables account coming from the transaction type. And this is the revenue account for consulting services. And this is for site clearing services. So our auto accounting uh, setup has worked. So we can save our work. And that is what we wanted to learn for this lesson. So uh, Bob, unless you have something to add, we can end the lesson there. Thank you so much, Victor. Thank you.